So far we have seen that if we have two parallel shafts, we can connect them using spur gears or helical gears. And if we have two intersecting shafts, we can connect them using bevel gears. But what if we have two shafts which are neither intersecting nor parallel? In other words, what if they are skew shafts? In that case, we will have to use what are called as spiral gears. Spiral gears have a very interesting geometry and let's take a look at how they are generated. For that, uh, we are going to look at an animation. Here it is. So we have a plate. Uh, we have made it transparent so we can take a better look at what's happening behind it also. Uh, at the center of the plate, there is a red shaft. Attached to that shaft is a yellow rod and mounted on the yellow rod is a green rod. So this green rod and the red rod are two skew lines in space. And we have an opening in this plate which is shaped like a hyperbola. Let us see what happens when we set this thing in motion. So we are going to set the red shaft in rotation. And you would notice the green rod surprisingly passes through that flat hyperbolic opening very comfortably without any obstruction. Okay. Uh, what more? We can add more plates if you want similar to the one that we have here. So even if we have some additional plates like this arranged in a radial manner, then the rod is going to pass through all of them very comfortably. So it passes through each one of them without any problem. In other words, we have generated a surface of revolution whose cross section is like a hyperbola. Such a surface is called as a hyperboloidal surface. And uh, this is how it looks. This is a hyperboloidal surface. It's a surface of revolution of a hyperbola. And it can be generated using just a line rotating about another line which is Q. And this is the geometry used by spiral gears as well. So let us now see how we can use two such surfaces to make a mating pair of spiral gears. So we'll start with axis of the first gear and the axis of the second gear over here. And you can see these two axes are neither parallel nor intersecting. They are just two skew lines in space. Now somewhere between these two or rather anywhere between these two, I can put a third line. This line also is a skew line. So it is neither intersecting nor being parallel to any of the first two lines or the axis. So we have three skew lines in space now. Next, we are going to take this line, the green line, and rotate it about the yellow line, the first axis. That will give us a surface of revolution. And we have just seen such surface of revolution is a hyperboloidal surface. We can do the same thing, uh, but with the second axis this time. So again, we take the green line and rotate it about the red axis, getting another surface, which is a hyperboloid. But these two surfaces used the same green line for their generation. And therefore, both of them will be making a contact along that line. So the green line that we have drawn is a line of contact. And this proves that if we have two hyperboloidal surfaces, we could make them make a contact along a line. And this is the principle in theory behind spiral gears. So instead of these full blown hyperboloidal surfaces, we can maybe use slices of these, but we can uh, be sure that we are going to get a line contact. So that's the trick behind spiral gears.